anyone wants to speak a public comment that hasn't signed up, oh, please do so before we start the meeting. Mm. All right, if anyone wants to speak a public comment that hasn't signed up, oh, please do so before we start the meeting. Mm. If anyone wants to speak a public comment that hasn't signed up, oh, please do so before we start the meeting. Mm. All right, if anyone wants to speak a public comment that hasn't signed up, oh, please do so before we start the meeting. Mm. All right, if anyone wants to speak a public comment that hasn't signed up, oh, please do so before we start the meeting. Mm. It's 2 p.m., so I'm going to call the uh, Pontiac Election Commission meeting to order, May 7th, 2021. Ms. Williams, will you please call the roll? Yes. Bawa? Yes. Chubb? Yes. Doyle? Present. Okay. Not need to uh, authorize or excuse any commissioners. Um, next on the agenda is approval of the agenda. I would make a motion to amend the agenda to alter number seven to be a resolution to approve and or amend the candidate certification list. I second. Uh, uh, um, okay. Discuss, uh, discussion on that motion. Um, I believe that that is an improper motion because the commission does not have the authority to certify candidates uh, during my report, but I'll ask um, Attorney Brewer to come to the microphone right now um, to. No, we're, this, at this point, we're only talking about amending the agenda. If you want to talk about the underlying merits of the motion of the resolution, I think it's appropriate when we get to that resolution. Further, under the city charter, I am the city attorney. I don't know who Mr. Brewer is or whether he's a city or an attorney, but his advice on this matter would not be appropriate because he was not uh, authorized to give legal advice by me. Well, first of all, you're, as a member of this commission, you cannot serve, you cannot advise the commission in being a voting member of the commission. I, I've never seen that before. We've had those discussions um, previously that you cannot be a voting member of a commission and also provide legal advice to that commission. And that's but, absolutely inconsistent with the charter. The charter very specifically notes at section 4.202 that I'll give all legal advice ex with the exceptions as provided in the charter. The charter then, with regard to the election commission, names the city attorney as sitting on the election commission but does not provide an exception that would disallow me from giving legal advice to this commission. I think it's quite standard that that would happen and I think that there's a reason that the charter does put our positions on this commission by position because it is based upon our background and experience with the city that we are appointed to this board. That again though has nothing to do with my motion to amend the agenda. Okay, we can take a, a, a vote on the, um, the amendment. Call the roll, right. please. Bala? Yes. Uh, yes. Doyle? No. Okay, well, um, then we need to uh, approve the agenda as amended. I mean, we need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Yes. All right, so motion. To that would need to be a oh. second. Okay, I seconded, yes. Motion to approve, Bawa? Yes. Chubb? Yes. Doya? No. Okay, uh, next we have approval of the minutes from October 20th, 2020. We need a motion to approve the minutes. I pass the motion to approve the minutes. Second. All right, so roll call Bawa. Yes. Chubb. Uh, abstain due to absence. Doyle. Yes. 
So next we will have uh, public comment. Public comment is uh, speakers are limited to uh, three minutes. If you could set the, the timer, three minutes. I just calm, uh, that's calm down. I'll yeah, start yeah, when they yeah. start talking. Yeah, okay. Uh, the first person is Maddie Hatchett. Good afternoon, commissioners and Pontiac voters. First of all, I want to say to Mr. Bawa and to Attorney Chubbs, you should disqualify yourself from this certification list for certain office because you two have a conflict of interest. You work for one of the people who it has been ruled is in ineligible to run. So you need to disqualify yourself. The second thing I want to say is the decision you make today will have an effect on our children in the future and on any future leaders that may come forth. If you certify people who broke the law, who committed a, a felony and perjured themselves, then you are telling our children that they don't have to follow the rules for anything. They can do whatever they want to do and still come forth and be a city leader in this community. So I'm hoping that you will consider that as you do your deliberation and you should abstain, you two, from ruling on one of the people who's being challenged. Thank you. The next person on the list is Chris Trebekah. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, I'm an attorney representing Ms. Hatchett, and if I can just uh, amplify uh, the comments that she made. Uh, initially, I'd just like to address Yes, yeah, so she, I did. She did. It's going. You wanted to count down instead of up? It's going, it's up, just going up, three up minutes. instead of up to the three. I'm out of order. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, as a preliminary issue, I'd just like to note that uh, Attorney Chubb's statement about his counsel to this commission is incorrect. Under Chapter 2 of the City Charter 4.202, uh, commissions are not listed amongst his duties to provide advice and counsel to. It is the business of the city and its departments. This commission is an independent commission separate and apart from the city and its departments. Therefore, uh, this commission is entitled to have its own separate legal counsel for the reasons that Chairman uh, Doyle stated. Beyond that, I would like to emphasize that the, the Supreme Court of Michigan has has declared that strict compliance with the Michigan election law is required in all instances. Substantial compliance, partial compliance, close enough is not the standard that is applied to Michigan election law. And in this case, the statute is clear, MCL 168.558 subsection 2, regarding the affidavits of identity. The three candidates that are challenged by Ms. Hatchett did not comply with the statute. And in the case of candidate Waterman, her noncompliance constitutes a violation of the law. Now just a moment about the roles and duties of this election commission. The election commission is a, is a body established by the charter. And under the charter, it has no discretion. It's ministerial duties. It is duty is to correct any errors that are to be made. There is no error in the certification of candidates made by the city clerk. His report is clear and his recommendation is true and correct and in compliance with the law. Each of you took an oath of office and your oath of office was to uphold the laws of the city and of this state. You represent the people of Pontiac, not an individual officer or not an individual candidate and the failure to not follow the law in the clear edict of the report of the clerk 
is a willful neglect of office that risks criminal prosecution. I would urge each of you to consider your oath of office to the people of Pontiac when casting your votes. I would also like to draw the attention to a decision issued by the Court of Appeals this morning, a published decision in which they make it clear that the inclusion and exclusion of the name on the ballot is ministerial in duty, and the clerk of a city has a clear obligation and duty to verify that an affidavit of identity is true and to confirm that when a candidate signs that affidavit of identity, all their campaign finance reports are up to date and all their fines That's are due. Time. It is a published that, decision. That's your, that's your I appreciate that. It is a published decision, and it is controlling on this body. Thank you. So the next person on the list, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't read the, uh, the printing. The, the address is on the Hubbard. What's your? Oh, that's you, Mr. Maxey. Okay, Bill Maxey. I'm sorry. Okay. Loud and clear. Good afternoon, commissioners. It's already been stated by Matt Hatchett and your attorney. I support Matt Hatchett. My name is not on this, but I ever. Commissioners, did you not take the oath to uphold? Candidates, did you not take the office? You placed your hand and you were sworn in and you must realize that you had your hands on the Bible. What happened here with our mayoral candidates is loud and clear. A false statement on the quarterly report made to Oakland County Clerk. We have youth in this city who are moving up academically and, apply, and not applying but seeking office. They must have the truth. What do we have to show them but a lie if you don't uphold this? And conflict of interest, yes, attorney and treasurer, it's a conflict of interest. You get the same paycheck. If you do not uphold this oath, it's perjury to let you know that the people of Pontiac are very much aware and I'm one of the leaders here. I speak loud and clear. And many of the times uh, we are asked, Matt Hatchett and I and, and Bob Bass and others to speak. It's after we have talked to them. Don't think that because you violated this oath that it's in this room. Please don't think that. It's all over Pontiac. And we know the conflict of interest had a meeting last night and this morning. No one gets the same paycheck. The attorney <laughs> and the treasurer, you're paid by. How can you set something against your boss? But nevertheless, the young people are watching you. They are looking to us. And we do have transparency and integrity. And to, to not Vote this as ineligible, you are setting a pattern. You're giving an edge to our up and coming youth leaders. Oh yes, you got the edge, so you can break the law. No, you can't. So you gotta be mighty careful, cause I was sworn in also by the judge here in Pontiac, Victor the district court. I swore to uphold, and I will do that. And any time you see Ms. Hatchett, you will see H. Bill Maxey. We are one and all, Mr. Yes, and Mrs. Sir. Pontiac, thinking the same. I Mr. support Mr. Maxey, everything that's your, that she that's said. Your time. That's your time. Mr. I'm out of time. Thank you. The uh, next member of the public is Tim Grimal. Good afternoon, commissioners. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you this afternoon. Uh, I am here in regard to the uh, challenge that was filed by Jonathan Townsend. 
I have set uh, in front of each of you uh, a packet of information uh, together with a supplemental stapled uh, packet of information. Uh, the information that I put in front of you clearly demonstrates that I have been a resident of Pontiac since last July, uh, well before the deadline to be a resident in order to be a candidate for mayor in the city. Uh, and I'd like to walk you through uh, that information. I, I would begin by noting that Mr. Townsend's correct in one regard, which is when he states what the city charter says. And the city charter is very clear that in order to serve as mayor, one must be a resident of the city of Pontiac for at least one year prior to taking office. As he also notes, the next mayor of Pontiac will take office on January 3rd of 2022. Therefore, one must have lived in the city of Pontiac since at least January 3rd of 2021, January 3rd of this year, in order to uh, become mayor of the city and to run as mayor for the city. Uh, I moved here last July in 2020, approximately six months before the city charter requires. And if you look at exhibit one in the packet of information that I put in front of you, uh, it is uh, the complete lease with confidential information redacted, but it's the lease with all relevant dates. And you can see that I moved uh, into my place in Pontiac uh, in July of 2020. If you look at exhibit two in the packet, it's a photo of the back of my driver's license, which clearly shows that the Secretary of State changed the date, uh, changed my address to Pontiac in July of 2020. The basis of, and, and I would also note that uh, as the Election Commission and, and certainly Clerk Doyle, uh, you all have access to government records indicating that I've been registered to vote here in Pontiac since last July, and that uh, I have voted in Pontiac last year in 2020. Uh, the basis of the complaint appears to be that there was a clerical error on one of my campaign finance statements for a different office, county commission. Um, that was a clerical error, and in evidence of that, if you look at exhibit three, it's an affidavit uh, from uh, my previous landlord uh, that says I haven't lived at that address in Auburn Hills since last July. Furthermore, I've attached a couple of documents that clearly that's the, I've that's attached. Your time. A, that's your time. I, I just want to finish my sentence if I could. Your, I've attached your, a couple of documents your, that show that I did change the address on my county commission report uh, previously. Thank you. We've got to respect the uh, the time limit. Everybody is only given three minutes to um, speak. So the next person on the list is. Trishelle Young, did I pronounce your name correctly? Okay. Good afternoon, commissioners. As indicated, my name is attorney Trishelle Young and I represent Mayor Deidre Waterman. I represent Mayor Waterman on a challenge that we have taken upon based on the position of Mr. Doyle as city clerk in terms of not certifying her as a candidate. Most of you are aware that we have filed a complaint in court as well as a motion for a writ of mandamus. That matter is set to be heard on Wednesday of next week at 8.30 a.m. I am here to ask you to do the right thing right now, and that is to uphold your charge of certifying all eligible candidates for this August primary ballot. The position that we have stated is consistent with what is going on right now in this entire area. The city clerk in Detroit received the same type of challenge that Mayor Waterman received, and the city clerk has taken a position that her function is ministerial. She does not have the authority to investigate beyond the four corners of the affidavit of identity, and she did not refuse to certify the candidate based on that challenge. We do not believe that the clerk in this position has the authority to refuse to certify Mayor Waterman as a candidate. And I would ask you to remember that the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was designed so that the people could elect representatives of their choice. By eliminating the candidate, you are minimizing the choice of the people. 
And that should not be the goal of what this commission is designed to do. So we are asking you to certify Mayor Waterman to follow the local authority. I would also note that the Taylor mayor had the same type of challenge and he was just given a temporary restraining order and that election commission was ordered to certify him as a candidate for mayor of Taylor. They did follow that court order. And again, the Detroit city clerk took the same position. So it is not unprecedented for this election commission to certify her. It is consistent with the law right now. And if it's not done here, we will end up in court. If it is done, we will withdraw our petition and we will simply ask that the voters of Pontiac have a full opportunity to really vote for the candidate of their choice. Thank you so much for your time. The next person on the uh, list is Mark E. Holling. Uh, this, to, to this honorable commission, uh, first just let me say for those that's watching, I hope you guys are uh, paying attention uh, to all this pettiness and speak up for those that's listening uh, I hope you guys are paying attention to all this pettiness and all this dirt uh, we haven't even started yet and this is ridiculous uh, the, my thing is this is the process if I brought in my paperwork on the 19th uh, no one called to say that my per paperwork wasn't correct uh, it was staffed by the Northern Republic everyone's seen it and so uh, from that day, from the 19th, we had our way to the 20th at 4 o'clock to say that your paperwork is incorrect. Uh, I had to find out that my paperwork was incorrect from the streets. Uh, I had no formal uh, response from anyone, and I don't know if that's the process or not. Uh, but then I heard someone else say that they got an opportunity to verify that they either changed their address or not, or verify if a law was broken. Well, let me just say for clarity, there's no way that I could have broken the law, purging myself, because uh, we didn't see a box. The box or didn't say check here, and the box uh, definitely was overlooked. Haven't had my glasses uh, for a year yet. For those that care, uh, I have prescription. But just let's, let me say this. Uh, I had to go home and ask my mom, was I a United States citizen? Because there's no one in this room that's watching, or no one else could tell you where they were born. And so uh, knowing that I used to be a city council ca uh, councilman, knowing that uh, I was the last person uh, to come out of the last primary for mayor, and that the question that I'm a citizen, uh, it should have been brought to my attention way before 4 o'clock on the 20th to say, well, look, not only that uh, the office missed it, you missed it, uh, the notary Republic missed it, that a box wasn't checked that didn't say check here. And so uh, by signing that box, uh, signing my signature, it's definitely saying that I am a United States citizen. And if that was questioned, I should have been afforded the, the opportunity to bring in a birth certificate to say I was born here at General Hospital. But if politics has gotten this petty, that the leaders here that claim that they be our moms and pops and care about us, that watched us grow up to go out and get somebody from three cities over to come to be this petty, uh, you know, not only am I hurt, I'm more disappointed uh, with this process. Uh, let everyone uh, get on this uh, ballot to be voted upon. And another part of this process, I didn't see nowhere where it say you get to get kicked off a ballot because of human error. Uh, you get kicked, get kicked off the ballot because you have a handicap provision. It's like a person couldn't hear and you tell them to move, are they responsible? Well, I couldn't see it. And if that's what it is, well, uh, I know you guys have a job to do and I'm not going to criticize that, but thank you for my opportunity. Next person on the list is Jim Kelly. Good afternoon. My name is Jim Kelly. I'm an attorney here on behalf of Jonathan Townsend with regard to a complaint that was filed challenging the candidacy and the eligibility to serve in office of Timothy Grimal. We heard Mr. Grimal speak earlier today. I was surprised at that because the complaint is not on the agenda. I was disappointed to see that despite this well-founded complaint, the clerk did not put it on the agenda for today's meeting. And I would urge the commissioners to take up this complaint when they discuss the eligibility of the candidates. The complaint is very well-founded. The timeline of things are not in dispute. 
You heard Mr. Grimal admit earlier today that he needs to be a resident of the city of Pontiac after July 1st, July 3rd, 2021, to qualify to be mayor if he's elected because the term begins July 3rd, 2022. He must be a resident for one year before that. Equally clear is his filings that he made with the Oakland County Clerk. Those are a matter of public record and unlike a lease or unlike other documents, not something that you could manipulate after the fact because they're online, everyone can see them. His campaign statement that he filed July 25th of this year, so after July, 20, after July 3rd, clearly showed his address in Auburn Hills, Michigan, not the city of Pontiac. He declared and attested under oath under penalties of perjury that he was a resident of the city of Auburn Hills. As such, he's not eligible to serve as mayor if he was elected. He's not even eligible to be on the ballot for this election. He should not be permitted to contest this election because he does not meet the resident qualifications of the city charter. The city charter is an important document. It is the most important document for the city. It is the constitution and it is the spirit of this city. It's approved by the voters and the people. I would refer you to section 4.101 of the charter, which clearly states this one year residency and clearly sets out the timeline. I would also urge you to take a look at the campaign statement, fi the campaign finance statement that Mr. Grimal filed under his own hand, signed by himself, January 25th, 2021. It clearly shows the Auburn Hills, Auburn Hills residents. He's not a resident of the city of Pontiac. He's not eligible to run for election. He's not eligible to serve if he's elected. Thank you. The next um, person to speak is Deidre Waterman. Good afternoon, Honorable Commission and citizens of Pontiac. I am Mayor Deirdre Waterman, second term, who has proudly served the city of Pontiac. I'm here to make very certain that I am a candidate for re-election for mayor of the city of Pontiac, and I will be a candidate for the mayor of the city of Pontiac. I am very proud of what we have accomplished, and my message will be continuing the progress we have made together with the city of Pontiac. With the many partners we've brought in and the many resources we have made available to the city of Pontiac. Last week, in accordance with the charter, I delivered my eighth budget to the city council. The balanced budget is required, but not only that, even after a year of COVID-19, uh, economic problems. I reported that we are going to forecast a surplus, not only for this year, but for the next fiscal year as well. That is an extremely good position for the city to be in, in terms of financial stability, considering we fought our way back from despair when I started as mayor. Not to mention the fact that we've improved our neighborhoods, made them more beautiful. We have improved public safety, we have uh, contributed to the infrastructure and are going to use more money for our infrastructure repair. Uh, and we're going to do the things that help to, to increase the pride of the citizens of Pontiac, not only in their neighborhoods, but bringing in so many new businesses and jobs and jobs and jobs and security for our community. So that's the message I'm gonna take out during my candidacy. And that's what I hope the citizens of Pontiac are going to consider. I want and should be on the ballot because it should be the citizens of the city who get to determine who they vote for. And that is why I'm here. I've served the city of Pontiac citizens proudly. I will continue to do that in whatever role they want me to play. But those are the people that we should be hearing. And with all the attorneys speaking, that's the missing element in this decision today. They depend upon the election commission for you to do your job. Thank you. I appreciate the chance to be heard. Next person on the list is Maurice Mahal. Hey, how y'all doing? By accident, I was just signing in. I didn't know I was supposed to be up here speaking. But since I'm up here, I'm going to say something. I've been a citizen of Pontiac all my life. And this city needs to focus more on the kids here. I coach football, I coach basketball. The whole, every kid in this city know who I am. And I think it's time that we focus more upon our youth here. 
our youth need the city of Pontiac more. There's so much going on with our kids, and it's like no one's paying attention to it. And the point I'm trying to make is, whoever, and give these people who are coming up here to be, have a position of mayor, a chance to run. Let the, let the citizens have a chance to vote who they want. But whoever, and I'm asking you, whoever gets in, focus more on our kids. Focus more on our kids. These kids need us. And that, it's the same that every time you look up a kid, it's either this or that in a bad manner. There's no motivation for our kids anymore. Open our eyes up and focus on these kids. We are so focused on businesses coming here and this and that. And focus on these kids. That's what it's about. My brother over here bring the Bible with the Lord say, love who first, love the kids. We too focused on the wrong things right now and not focused on our kids. Look at our high school, look at our middle school, Why all these schools around here shut. Where do our kids have to go? In the streets every day. When I was young, you couldn't go out to the streets. You had centers, you had schools, you had activities for the kids. All None of that's around here no more. Stop being blind to these kids. These kids need us. Kids are the future. When we leave here, who has to run this place? The kids. We need someone to put them in the right direction. Stop having to close eye to these kids and wake up, city of Pontiac. Wake up, city of Pontiac. Our kids need us. I'm tired of going home nights and hearing about so-and-so has lost a child. I was looking at the news one day, how did they say Pontiac High School education is the bottom of the barrel. How do you think that make us parents feel? Focus more on these kids. We bring the jobs, we got the jobs, we got the Bring the education pipeline to Pontiac. That's what you do. Bring the education. If the kid is learning and want to learn in school, he will motivate his parents to go out and work. But if the kid, y'all have not, focus more on these kids. Thank you. And the, uh, the last speaker for um, public comment is Veronica Taylor. Good evening, this honorable body. First, I would like to ask God for prayer for the city of Pontiac. We deeply need prayer here in this city. Not just this city, this whole country. And as I ask God to do the right thing, First, let me tell you a little bit of what I've been through in the last month or so. I have, as a registered, sworn in, precinct delegate for two counties, I had some people want to challenge, bring a challenge here as I go and do my work as a real precinct delegate of getting, helping getting people on ballot. Everybody that want to run for a, for a seat has the right to. No one should be able to tell no one they can't run for a seat. Now, if they got their paperwork in order, their eyes dotted and crossed, and all their stuff is dead, then they should be able to run. Now, we did, as me taking in and walking in this clerk's office with a lot of them that I helped, I have two which I seen, watch them do that affidavit. Mr. Mark Holland that ran for mayor of the city tried to put his glasses on to see, to put his dot to make sure he had did what he needed to do. And he just got his glasses, couldn't do them and get them right. And he passed his paperwork over to our clerk. And as she read it, she could have seen that the box was not checked there before she notarized it. Now, to have people to come and sit and challenge knowing this man or any other like Perry Earl that did his. He had two papers that he notarized right in front of me and he did not see it either. And the challenge, can they run to sit on the ballot? Here is a youth 
as I knocked at them doors and got those signatures for over a bunch, seven to be exactly, I heard so much from the people. And the people are complaining that we are putting people in office look like they just our friends and not listening to them. Now to say they do want some new mayors here. They do want some new stuff did. But we need to think about not challenge these people that are sitting up here if they work here. We all have candidates here that we all support. Miss Maddie Hatchett has hers. We all have ours. Every candidate in here, even y'all up there working, that shouldn't even be a call. The call should be, what kind of job is y'all going to do for this city? Because I have heard what this city needs, and God needs to clean up Pontiac, not the people. Thank you. Thank you. So that uh, concludes public comment on our agenda. The next item on the agenda is the city clerk certification report. Uh, I want to begin by uh, reading the um, from the city charter. Uh, section um, 2.108, which uh, says primary election, nominations for each elective office shall be made by a city primary election. However, whenever not more than two persons file for nomination to an office, there shall be no primary election for the office. The city clerk shall certify such persons as duly nominated for that office in the name of the persons who filed shall be placed on the general election ballot for the office. I also want to read so we're clear about who has the duty to do what um, from the election commission section, section 2.105. The city election commission is composed of the city clerk, the city attorney, and the city treasurer because this was amended in March. 2016. In the initial charter, it was the city assessor who was um, a member of the commission. The commission has general supervision of all elections in the city and may hire assistants, inspectors, and other election personnel. Except as otherwise provided by this chartered ordinance, the commission shall perform all duties required of election commissions by law. It may subpoena witnesses, administer oaths, take testimony, and require the production of evidence. To enforce the subpoena or order for production of evidence, or to impose any penalty prescribed for failure to comply a subpoena or order, the commission shall apply to the appropriate court. All meetings of the commission shall be met open to the public. In case of any doubt concerning election procedure, the commission shall prescribe the procedure to be followed. Then I also want to, to uh, read from the, uh, the Michigan election law, and we all do know that State law supersedes uh, municipal law. And this is uh, Michigan Election Law Act 116 of 1954, 1.68588, filing nominations, qualifying petitions, filing fee or affidavit of candidacy, affidavit of identity, requirement to indicate name change, exception statement, noncompliance, selection of office to which candidacy restricted, failure to make selection perjury, separate violation. Section 5581, um, when filing a nominating petition, qualifying petition, filing fee, an affidavit of a candidacy for a federal, county, state, city, township, village, metropolitan district, or school district office to any election, a candidate shall file with the officer with whom the petition's fee or affidavit is filed two copies of an affidavit of identity. A candidate nominated for federal, state, county, city, township, or village office at a political party convention or caucus shall file an affidavit of identity within one business day after being nominated with the Secretary of State. The affidavit identity filing requirement does not apply to a candidate nominated for the office of President of the United States or Vice President of the United States. Two, an affidavit of identity must contain the candidate's name and residential address a statement that this candidate is a citizen of the United States, the title of the office sought, a statement that the candidate meets the constitutional and statutory qualifications for the office sought, other information that may be required to satisfy the officer as to the identity of the candidate and the manner in which the candidate wishes to have his or her name appear on the ballot. If a candidate is using a name that is not the name that he or she was given at birth, the candidate shall include an affidavit of identity, the candidate's full former name. 
3. The requirement to indicate a name change of the affidavit of identity does not apply if the name in question is one of the following. A name that was formally changed at least 10 years before filing as a candidate. A name that was changed in the certification of naturalization issued by a federal district court at the time the individual became a naturalized citizen at least 10 years before filing as a candidate. The name that has changed because of marriage the name that has changed because of divorce, but only if a legal name by which the individual was previously known. A name that constitutes a common law name as provided in Section 560B. An affidavit of identity must include the statement as the date of the affidavit. All statements, reports, late filing fees and fines required of the candidate or the candidate committee organized to support the candidate's election under the Michigan Campaign Finance Act 1976 PA 388 MCL 169.201 to 169.282 have been filed or paid in a statement that the candidate acknowledged that making a false statement in the affidavit is perjury punishable by a fine up to 1,000 or imprisonment up to five years or both. If a candidate files the affidavit of identity with an officer other than the county clerk or secretary of state, the officer shall immediately forward to the county clerk one copy of the affidavit of identity by first class mail. The county clerk shall immediately forward one copy of the affidavit of identity for state and federal candidates to the secretary of state by first class mail. An officer shall not certify to the board of election commissioners the name of a candidate who fails to comply with this section or the name of a candidate who executes an affidavit of identity that contains a false statement with regard to any information or statement required under this section. If petitions or filing fees are filed by or, beh or on behalf of a candidate for more than one office, either federal, state, county, city, village, township, metropolitan district, or school district, the terms of which run concurrently or overlap the candidate so filing or on behalf of whom petitions or fees were filed, shall select the one office to which his or her candidacy is restricted within three days after the last day of the filing of petitions or filing fees, unless the petition or filing fees are filed for two offices that are combined for office that are not incompatible. Failure to make the selection disqualifies a candidate with respect to each office for which the petitions or fees were so filed in the name of the candidate must not be printed upon the ballot for those offices. A vote cast for that candidate at the ensuring primary or general election must not be counted and is void. A violation of this section for perjury is distinct and separate from any violation of the Michigan Finance Campaign Act 1976 PA 388-MCL 169.201-169282. to and I read that to uh, start off before my um, certification report, so where it is very clear as to who is the certifying officer. It's clearly stated in the charter, the responsibilities of the clerk and the responsibilities of this election commission. is further stated in the state law. It further states in the state law what I shall not do. So. Um, I've also asked uh, Mr. Brewer if you could come to the, um, the podium because I've asked for um, some legal assistance because I too may have thought some things could have been possibly petty or whatever, but I want to make sure that as the clerk, because I took the oath of office, that I was following the duties of my office. So that's why um, Mr. Brewer. And I would absolutely object to Mr. Brewer talking. The, the election, the, for, the for, charter. Excuse, excuse hey, no, me. Let me state my objection. This is a You're point of order. order. You're this out of order. This is order during my, no, out of no, order. this is during my report. You're out of order. The, I'm the chair of the meeting. Go ahead, Mr. No, Brewer. your report is you talking. He has not been hired by this commission, and this commission does have the authority to hire uh, consultants, we have not done so. He does not give legal advice to us. He can speak during public comment. He is nobody to this board other than an individual member of the public. He absolutely is inappropriate if he's speaking right you're, now. You're out of order and you're incorrect. Absolutely not. For, furthermore, an ordinance that was actually done while your a law firm was the city attorney gives the city clerk the authorization 
to hire anyone as long as there is funds in the city clerk's budget. So please check the ordinance I, that is enacted. So I fully understand that, and that's when you're acting as the city attorney. We are sitting at our city uh, clerk. We are sitting here as the charter commission, as the election commission, and we're having a meeting of the election commission. He has no authority to speak on this matter. If you want, I, I agree. We then we can have it's wholly inappropriate. I, I think I agree with that. You know, we have not appointed him as our consultant, so um, I don't think it's appropriate for him to speak. Yeah, I would make a motion not to hear the t statements of Mr. Bro Bower. I second it. I believe you're in essence out of order because as part of my uh, certification uh, report is in essence my uh, particular in essence uh, report and it's the city clerk's certification report. It's not the commission's certification report. It's the city clerk's certification report. So you as should. a part of making my certification report and as a part of the ordinance that is enacted, he is operating in the capacity of advising in essence the city clerk. So. This is totally, in, but Mr. Uh, he can then therefore could have spoken under public comment. So he can be given in essence three minutes like any member of the public to in essence uh, speak. Public comment is over. Public. That is not appropriate and there is a motion on the floor. Yes. <sighs> because. I mean, I want it very noted that I think this commission is acting totally out of order on several different particular um, instances. But uh, neither, in essence, it uh, uh, um, said. I believe that the um, uh, there was a uh, case by the Court of Appeals that, in essence, has ruled as to what the authority of the commission and, in essence, I guess the clerk on these types of uh, uh, matters, but um, and I'll I'll continue with my uh, certification report. Uh, if the commission so chooses, I guess now for Mr. Brewer to uh, speak. Then uh, I just want to note it that I believe that the commission is out of order, and that's why I have a stenographer here to take a, w verbatim word by word. I also want it noted that I believe that the city attorney is acting out. Uh, a capacity because I've stated I want this on the record that as a member of the Commission you cannot be the legal advisor to the Commission so are you requesting or are you requ withdrawing your request that mr. Brewer speak or do you want us to move forward I had made a request for mr. Brewer to speak I said as a part of my certification report I was allowing mr. to Brewer to be a part of that in essence presentation and I don't think the Commission has the authority to tell me what should be in essence in my report. It's my report. So yep. as a part of my report, I think it's more than appropriate for Mr. Brewer to speak. Again, it's your report. You could have put, in, put it in the written report or you could have included him on the agenda or added him to the agenda at the proper time. This isn't the proper time. Like I said, we have a motion on the floor. So if you're going to withdraw your request to have him speak, then I'll withdraw the motion and we can move forward. I I'm not withdrawing my request to have him speak because I didn't make a request to have him speak I because, call for the vote on the because motion. he is a part of, I mean, I'm giving my certification report. I don't believe the commission has the authority to tell me how to, in essence, do a report, and I am the certifying officer of... I call for a vote on the motion. Okay. Motion, uh, Bawa? Yes. Chub. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. So I will continue with my um, a certification uh, report. Matter of fact, I think I need to, to read this so that this is in, in, in the record. In closes my certification report as the certifying officer for the city of Pontiac, I'm providing you with a list of certified candidates for the office of mayor, city council, and library board. If I was unable to certify a candidate, the reason is stated. In addition, I have included the list of candidate eligible, eligibility challenges that I received as well as candidate responses to a uh, challenge. So we did uh, pass, I did make sure that there were copies of the agenda packet. So as it relates to uh, candidates uh, for mayor, Jeremy Bowie, uh, the city clerk has certified Wanda Denise Coates, 
uh, certified Tim Grimo, certified Mark Holland, ineligible. Uh, Mr. Holland is ineligible because he did not complete the attestation section of the affidavit. I'm a citizen of the United States and I meet the statutory and constitutional requirements for the office sought was not completed. I did contact, uh, just for the, the benefit of the public and all, to see if that was something that the clerk had discretion on. And unfortunately, the clerk did not have discretion. If that box was not checked, then you had to be, I had, it was my duty to have to rule you, in essence, uh, ineligible. Alexandria T. Riley, uh, clerk certified Deidre Waterman, ineligible. A candidate uh, made a false statement on an affidavit. Ms. Waterman failed to file a 2020 annual report, a 2020 October quarterly report, a 2020 July quarterly report, a 2019 annual report, a 2019 October quarterly quarterly report, and a 2019 July quarterly report and the, with the office of the Oakland County Clerk on or before the date she signed the affidavit on April 13, 2021. As I had uh, previously read, if um, an officer shall not certify to the Board of Election Commissioners the name of a candidate who fails to comply with this section or the name of a candidate who executes an affidavit of identity that contains a false statement with regards to any information or statement required under this um, section. It was so as it, as it relates to uh, Uh, Deidre Waterman, I uh, received a communication from uh, Joseph Roselle, the Director of Elections for Oakland County Clerk Register uh, slash Register of Deeds uh, on April 21st. It said, Dear Mr. Doyle, my office is in receipt of the affidavit of identity for mayoral candidate Deidre Waterman. After a review of our records, we have determined that Ms. Waterman failed to file a 2020 annual report, a 2020 October quarterly report, a 2020 July quarterly report, a 2019 annual report, a 2019 October quarterly report, a 2019 July quarterly report, MCL 168558. Subsection 4, as amended states in part, an affidavit of identity must include a statement that that as of the date of the affidavit, all statements, reports, late filing fees and fines required of the candidate or any candidate committee have been filed or paid. The statute further states that as an officer shall not certify to the Board of Election Commissioners the name of a candidate who fails to comply with this section or a name of a candidate who executes an affidavit of identity that contains a false statement. Please consider this as a notice to not certify Ms. Waterman as a candidate to your Board of Election Commissioners. So that concludes the, the, the uh, candidates for mayor, candidates for city council, district one, Marcus Bowman, certified, Karen Platten Jorgensen, certified, Sean Preston, certified, Julia M. Ruffin, certified, Melanie Rutherford, certified. Candidates for City Council District 2, Brett Nicholson, certified. Megan E. Shramsky, certified. Coleman Yoakum, certified. Candidates for City Council District 3, Michael Goodman, certified. Mary E. Pila, certified. Candidates for City Council District 4, Ashley Alderman, certified. Randy Carter, certified. Kathleen W. James, certified. Candidates for City Council District 5, Gloria Miller, certified. William Parker Jr., certified. Candidates for City Council District 6, Doris Taylor Burks, certified. William A. Carrington, certified. Candidates for City Council District 7, Perry D. Earl Jr., ineligible. Uh, Mr. Perry is ineligible because he did not complete Statements and attestation section of the affidavit. I'm a citizen of the United States and I meet the statutory and constitutional requirements for the office sought was not um, completed. Candidates for library board. Angela uh, 
Allen, certified. Ashley R. Curry, certified. Perry D. Earl, Jr., ineligible. Did not complete statements and attestation section of the affidavit. I'm a citizen of the United States, and I meet the statutory and constitutional requirements for the office sought was not completed. Maddie McKinney Hatchett, certified. Dion A. Johnson, certified. Lacey Cross, uh, certified. Yvette Brinker Marion, certified. Hobart Maxey, certified. Rosie Lance Richardson, certified. Melanie Rutherford, certified. Chanel N. Weatherspoon, certified. In addition, I received a number of candidate uh, ch challenges to the eligibility of uh, candidates. Um, I received several uh, challenges from Maddie McKinney Hatchett. Um, the first challenge was uh, the candidacy of Deidre Waterman for uh, mayor. In my uh, decision is noted, well, I've stated before, that uh, uh, Ms. Waterman is ineligible for certification. Uh, Maddie McKinney Hatchett also uh, challenged Mark Holland's uh, candidacy. Again, um, Mr. Holland is ineligible uh, for certification. Uh, Maddie McKinney Hatchett uh, challenged uh, Perry Earls City Council District 7 uh, candidacy. Uh, again, Mr. Uh, Earl is ineligible for certification. She also, Maddie McKinney Hatchett, also challenged Perry Earls Library Board candidacy. And again, he was uh, ineligible for certification for the previous reasons stated. I also received a challenge from Jonathan Townsend in regards to Tim Grimel's uh, candidacy for mayor. Um, I reviewed the, uh, the documents. He made a challenge as it relates to uh, Mr. Grimel's residency and that he made a false statement um, on his affidavit. The, uh, Mr. Grimel has been uh, certified. His residency is uh, verified. Uh, therefore, no false statement was made on the affidavit uh, um, that he filed with the office of the clerk. So I was unable to verify that a false statement was made on his affidavit that he filed with the clerk. And that was the, uh, the determining factor. In addition, uh, Mr. Grimel submitted a response to uh, Mr. Townsend's um, challenge. So I just uh, wanted a very clear and on the record that the, per the uh, charter, the clerk is the certifying officer for the city of Pontiac, not this commission. The commission has the authority to approve the ballot. The commission does not have the authority to certify any candidates. And if the commission takes the position to try to attempt to certify any candidate that has not been certified by the city clerk, who is the certifying officer for the city of Pontiac, then the commission is acting beyond its authority that was given to it by the charter of the city of Pontiac, which in essence is the governing um, document. And then in addition, as well as is stated within the uh, state law, clearly if the commission has the authority to certify, then it wouldn't say an officer shall not certify to the Board of Election Commissioners right within the Michigan Election Law Act 116 of 1954. And if, I want to also note it, and if this commission takes the position of failing to do its duty, then this clerk will therefore look into legal action against this commission. Because it's clear I, uh, that I personally have felt that a lot of things have been done that has not been proper, and therefore, to me, documents, charters, and things of that nature from the standpoint of a clerk are, in essence, your governing documents. So therefore, I think we need clear and concise, um, and we'll maybe need a court, in essence, intervention, because, and I like I just would state that I would hope that the commission would not act beyond its authority. But as a clerk, it has to be clear what the authority of the, the clerk is and what the authority of this commission is. So I want that as well on the um, record. So does any commissioner have any question about so, my report mm -hmm. or want to discuss any particular item? Sure. And you just referenced um, 
acting within the scope of your authority, and I think that's a good place to start because there's a lot of pieces of this report that I find wholly outside the scope of your authority. Several attorneys spoke today, and I believe everyone was on the same page about one thing, and that's that we have a ministerial function as this board. And so when we received the affidavits of identity, and when you received the affidavits of identity as the clerk, that is, and you went through them and you found that three people did not complete the affidavit properly, the law is clear that they are not able to be on the ballot. I don't necessarily agree with the law. It's, I think it's unfortunate, but it, that is the state of the law right now, and we are bound to comply with it. But the remainder of the law is that your actions, again, are ministerial. And so the courts have been very clear about <clears throat> your ministerial authority, and as I've noted, <clears throat> in both the Barry case, <clears throat> Barry v. Garrett, which noted that your, you have the ministerial task of completing a facial review of the affidavits, and the Bashara v. Wayne County Clerk case, <clears throat> which notes, ultimately we conclude the plaintiff's proposed construction of 168.558 sub 4 would read an additional requirement into the statute requiring a county clerk to become the arbiter of truth or falsity of, or falsity of statements made in an affidavit of identity. We refuse to do so. And as Mr. Trebilcock pointed out, th this is actually an unpublished opinion, but is, as Mr. Trebilcock pointed out, the Court of Appeals ruled today in the matter of Victor Burton Harris v. Wayne County Clerk. and that case actually cited to the Bashara case, so to the extent that it wasn't controlling authority, it is beginning today pursuant to the Victoria Burton Harris case. And <clears throat> what that means is that when you <clears throat> have decided arbitrarily to go beyond the four corners of two of all of these people's certification reports, that was wholly arbitrary and wholly inappropriate. The affidavit as filled out by Mayor Waterman was complete on its four corners. Pursuant to the controlling law, it, she absolutely should be on the ballot. Likewise, with Mr. Grimal, there was a substantive challenge, but you're not the arbiter of truth. Lawsuits can be filed to challenge these things. Other, other actions can be taken by prosecutors. And as you noted, the standard is that you shall not certify an, uh, the, uh, an election person, a uh, person for election that files a false affidavit of identity. But the issue is, or that contains a false statement, that is, the issue is when it says that, it doesn't make you the investigator. But you've chosen to, again, handpick two people politically motivated or not, and dig, do a deep dive on their actual applications and the status. And likewise, as you noted, Mr. Roselle, did, the Director of Elections for Oakland County, did send you a letter on April 21st saying that he's determined it's a false statement. So I responded and told him, I need a letter from Corp Council saying that you're the person that has the authority to determine that it's a false statement. He never sent a, a word. He never said another word to me. And I never received anything of that nature from Corp Counsel because he doesn't have that authority. That is properly rested in the judiciary or by a prosecutor that, that ultimately has a guilty determination by a, um, by a court. And I think it's clear that this certification process was further arbitrary and capricious because although you've hunt, gone on the hunt for Mr. Grimal and he's prepared affidavits and things of that nature to prove his residency and the fact that he's lived there for over a year, I question whether you did that for any of these others, for Brett Nicholson, McCall Goodman, Randy Carter, Kathleen James, Gloria Miller, William Parker. It, it, excuse me, uh, Mr. Chubb. I I did not go on the hunt for anyone. I gave you a list of all the documentations, in essence, that I received. You requested that, that information, and I provided that information to you. I did not go on the hunt for any particular body. And all the challenges, which I believe people are within their authority, to submit challenges 
uh, you received copies of those challenges. They were all date stamped in the clerk's office, as well as the response that I received from the challenge as it relates to, I mean, Mr. Grimo's response to the particular uh, challenge. I don't necessarily even know how he became aware of that particular uh, challenge. But whatever was turned in, and, and, and I'm sorry, I need to also add, because the report was prepared before um, this morning while I'm at it, we did receive two additional um, challenges, so I guess I do need to, to put them into the, uh, the record as well, um, too. So after you finish your comment, I want to add those sure. two in the record, too. But the report was prepared before. And so I think now, just on the record, you've noted that you haven't done any investigation into the underlying documentation pro provided or the truth underlying the documentation provided by candidates unless there was a challenge. That is the definition of arbitrary and capricious. It's that, that, wholly, excuse me, it's wholly excuse inappropriate. Me, you no, can respond well, when I finish well, my comments. It is wholly inappropriate, and it's why the certification is wholly indefensible. This board should not act to approve this obviously illegal action. Set, set, let me be, be very clear. It is when, when the clerk's office receives an affidavit and petitions by its very nature, we have to, in essence, we have to verify the, 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 the petitions. So we have to go through to make sure that each particular candidate has enough nominating petitions. So that is what, in essence, in essence, that we uh, do. And we have to, in essence, review the uh, particular affidavits. In addition to that, if somebody submits a challenge, then I think, in essence, it's incumbent upon me to uh, receive that challenge. And I, uh, in essence, read the challenge as well, too. The law does not tell me not to accept um, challenges um, from people. So, well, the law doesn't tell you not to accept challenges, but it also doesn't give you the authority to investigate and rule on them. And that's the piece that you're missing here. That portion of this certification is wrong. Everything else is accurate. And the only change is that it would result with Deirdre Waterman being on the ballot. Well, if, I guess it, the position of this commission is either to uh, accept, because I talked to the, the county, uh, because previously, Apparently, four years ago, the uh, and I wasn't in this um, capacity. Apparently, the the certification of of candidates was not even done by this commission. When I reviewed all the minutes from the 2017 meetings of the commission, there was never a certification um, item. But uh, I was informed by the county when they certify candidates, the commission simply receives and places them on file. So I believe all the authority that this commission has to do can do. It's received and placed in a file or accepted as is or not accepted at all. But it does not have, because I'm the certifying officer, it does not have the authority to amend any certification. It's not have that authority. I guess it, uh, the question number, who is, who is the certifying officer for the city of Pontiac per the charter? The the duties of the election commission are set out where it notes that, that it has the oversight of everything arranging the primary ballot. And, and you certainly have your obligations that are your ministerial obligations to review the applications for certification. But this board clearly has a role and an authority in that regard. Right, and the, 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 the authority is to, like I said, receive it or, or uh, I guess accept it or not accept it. But it does not have the authority to amend it because the board does not have, is not the certifying officer. So the board would be acting without of this scope if it attempted to amend uh, any uh, certification. But I, I do want to add into the, 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 the record that I received a challenge uh, from Robert Bass um, from the community CDC. Uh, Mr. Bass is challenging the, um, Mayor Deidre Waterman's failure to comply with the annual reporting um, requirement. So this is a challenge against uh, Mayor Waterman's candidacy. I will uh, share it and I can provide uh, copies as well. But it was received in essence um, today. 
And I also received a challenge from HBO Maxi from the uh, New Pontiac Urban Institute. And Mr. Maxi is challenging uh, Deidre Waterman um, and Perry Earl and Mark Holland. And I'll start that one. So these, uh, you've received all the other um, documents. Yes. So I'll make sure that you get copies of those um, documents as well. Um, So the next item on the agenda is actually, I provide the overall, the in essence, um, report, and is the certify, the candidate certification um, list. So it is- Consistent with our um, approved amendment to the agenda, I'd make a motion to amend the approved candidate list to include Deirdre Waterman. I second it. Discussion on that motion, I want, as discussion on that particular motion, I want it clearly stated on the record, this commission is acting beyond the scope of its duty. And since this commission is acting beyond the scope of its duty, okay, I will not vote. certify Deidre Waterman as a candidate because the commission does not have the authority. The commission only has the authority to approve the ballot. That's why it's not an agenda item because we don't have the ballot. But the, the commission does not have the authority to certify Call for the vote. I, excuse me, I'm talking. So do not be rude and interrupt me. I am the chair of the meeting. So as I was saying, because there is discussion on the matter, so I definitely want to note it. I also want to note it that as the clerk, I will take legal action against this commission if this commission makes an unauthorized move and vote to put Ms. Waterman on the ballot when it's clearly not, was not certified by the city clerk, the certifying officer for the city of Pontiac. Call for the vote. Uh, Bawa? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Joya? No, for all the reasons in essence uh, stated. And also, I wanted also in essence noted on the record, the uh, clerk will investigate as into the, the, the uh, city attorney if it's a conflict for uh, him providing this body legal advice and also being a voting member of this uh, commission. We are adjourned. So, yes, and as, as noted, the clerk will not certify Deidre Waterman. So I don't know what the next particular steps for this body is, but I will not. So this meeting is adjourned at 3.12.